Hi developers, welcome to Serverless Migration Station, where we show you one way you can modernize your code on one of our serverless compute platforms. I'm Wesley Chun, joined by my friend Martin and our little friend Porter to take you on an alternate journey from App Engine to Cloud Run. Good to be here again, Wes. Uh, you showed us how to containerize our app for Cloud Run last time. Uh, why are we doing it again today? Well, I'm glad you asked, Martin. In the Module 4 video, we did show developers how to use Docker to containerize their App Engine apps for Cloud Run. Check it out if you missed it. Containerizing your App Engine app for Cloud Run is still on the to-do list today, but this time we'll do it without needing to know about Docker, Docker files, or how containers are put together. OK, that sounds great. Uh, but how are we going to containerize an app without Docker? Yeah, well, we're going to use Google Cloud Build Packs to do the job. Instead of having to describe all the steps for building the container, Build Packs lets you off the hook because it does the heavy lifting. It looks at your code, what language it's in, its third-party dependencies, and so on, then builds the most efficient container image it can. Check out these links and this video from one of our colleagues to learn more about Cloud Build Packs. That's good info, uh, but I'm curious. Uh, where did these Build Packs come from? Yeah, well, they originated from Heroku back in 2011. And since then, Build Packs took off for different languages, different cloud vendors, but in 2018, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation unified build packs under a common standard. Google Cloud build packs are 100% compatible with the Cloud Native build packs and adheres to its open spec. Check out the links to the Cloud Native build packs and its spec. Uh, cloud build packs containerizes apps to be deployed on Google Cloud, whether Cloud Run, GKE, which is our managed Kubernetes service, or Compute Engine VMs. OK, sounds good. I can't wait to try it. So I did look ahead, and I found out there there's one module 5 finish folder, which is Python 3. Uh, what happened to Python 2, Wes? Uh, unfortunately, build packs don't support Python 2. So if you do have a Python 2 app, you got to use Docker. But so our starting point will be the Python 3 version of the module 2 Cloud NDB app. We didn't containerize that one with Docker last time. So let's pause right now so all of you can go grab the code from the module 2b folder or use your own from the module 2 migration. Got it? You can also follow along in the code lab and get hands-on experience containerizing it with Cloud Build Packs. Let's start by confirming the Module 2 code works. Whether using your app or ours, redeploy with gcloud app deploy and verify you get the same output as from previous modules. If you've done any of these migration modules, you'll know that this app typically doesn't change at all. That's the purpose, right? Migrating without breaking anything? Just like in Module 4, we're switching products from App Engine to Cloud Run. So make a full copy of your Module 2 app folder, because like with Docker, you're going to delete app.yaml as it's not used in Cloud Run. Next, let's tackle requirements.txt. Quick review. App Engine and Cloud Functions are source-based and start your app with a production-ready server. Since Cloud Run is a little bit more DIY, you have to roll your own. Python App Engine uses gunicorn if you don't specify your own, so we're going to use that with Cloud Run by adding it to requirements.txt so it's identical to the one in Module 2b folder except with gunicorn at the top since I like to put mine in lowest to highest level order. Yes, version numbers are a good practice. I left them out here because they change all the time, however, they will be updated in the repo. Like with Docker, the app itself doesn't change, we're just containerizing it, right? The last thing needed is to launch a G Unicorn to start our app. With Docker, there's either a command or entry point directive at the end of the Docker file to kick off G Unicorn. With Cloud Build Packs, there is no app.yaml nor Docker file. Instead, we use a Heroku style proc file. It's basically a config file describing your app's processes and how to start them. For our app, there's only one process the web server. It's basically the entry point directive from app.yaml or the Docker file. So create yours with this one line specifying gunicorn as our web process. And boom, that is it. We're also going to drop some links down below so you can learn more about proc files. And that, we say, is a wrap. Run the same gcloud run deploy service name dash dash dot command as you did with Docker, or the longer version with the platform type, region, and so on if you're lazy like me. And in about a minute or less, your app will be available globally on Cloud Run. It should work the same as before, whether on App Engine or Cloud Run with Docker. Now you've containerized your App Engine app again, but this time without a Docker file. Congratulations. Wow, I didn't know creating and deploying a container would be that easy. <laughs> Build packs are amazing. 
Uh, since I don't have to worry about Docker files anymore, I'm thinking about how to increase my app's presence. Uh, while my users here in the US don't have any issues, my friends in Sweden are saying it's sometimes laggy. Can I deploy my container to other regions? Oh, for sure, Martin. In these past few videos, we used the magic one-line build and deploy command to get you started with the least friction. That's gcloud run deploy with dash dash source to specify the code to deploy. For more sophisticated usage, let's talk about breaking it up into two separate commands that will make it more flexible to do the other things like what you asked. Sounds good, Wes. Uh, I'm willing to give up some convenience so I can more easily deploy my app elsewhere. Uh, but you said the one line command builds and deploys my container. Uh, can I guess that the two separate commands are one for the build and the other for the deploy? Precisely. With the one line command, we got your app from code all the way to Cloud Run without discussing container images or other resources like Cloud Build, Container Registry, or its successor, Artifact Registry. But since the cat's out of the bag, here's the gcloud build submit dash dash tag command. You provide the full image path, which is made up of the registry namespace like gcr.io or package.dev, respectively, your project ID, image name, and possibly the region. When you build your image, it has to be registered before you can deploy to Cloud Run. Registries help manage images, provide access control, lets you check for vulnerabilities, and is where you plug into CI CD integrations. Check out the links to the gcloud build submit command, as well as both registries to learn more. OK, so that's the build and register step. Now, how do I deploy the same container image to multiple regions? Hold on, we're getting there, Martin. Now that the image is in the registry, it's straightforward to deploy. But instead of gcloud run deploy dash dash source, it's gcloud run deploy dash dash image where you provide the image path name. Using this command, you can deploy the same image to other regions without having to build identical containers. Another benefit to having your image in the registry is that you can launch services directly from the Cloud Console whenever you want from wherever you are. In other words, you don't have to be on a command line at your terminal. You can be in Sweden to launch that service there. OK, I feel good about containerizing my App Engine app for Cloud Run. Uh, what are some other App Engine migrations to consider? Yeah, well, where you usually go usually depends on the service that you're using. Apps using Cloud NDB may consider migrating to Cloud Data Store if you have other code using that library. If so, take a look at Module 3. But if all you have are apps using Cloud NDB, just stay where you are. If you're excited about the Firebase features in Cloud Firestore, you can consider that migration in Module 6 and 10. If your app uses App Engine Task Queues, consider migrating to Cloud Tasks. You can learn more about those in Modules 7, 8, and 9. Finally, if your app only has one basic function, or if you're interested in breaking up a larger App Engine app into a set of microservices, check out Module 11 to learn about migrating to Cloud Functions. Whoa, that's a lot of options. Uh, thanks for pointing us to possible next stops, as well as these last two videos showing users how to containerize their App Engine apps for Cloud Run. Yeah, and thank all of you for staying with us on these short journeys in modernizing your serverless apps. This is Wesley Chen from Google Cloud on behalf of Martin and Porter, and we look forward to seeing you at the next migration station or on another serverless expedition soon. Mm -hmm.